Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, well, you know when you finish a logo design project for a client and you have to export all these different sizes and different formats, I've put together a pack that is going to shortcut that process and save you a ton of time. So if you want to grab it, you can find it at the link in the description. There's instructions included. If you don't want to bother watching the video, it's okay, bruh, no worries. But if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to show you how to use this logo pack in this video. Let's go. Rightio, so the final logo design has been approved and you're ready to export it in a variety of different sizes and formats. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the description of this video and download the zip folder called logopack.zip. You can see that here. And depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you're going to want to extract this. So for Mac, you just double click and it extracts the contents. For PC, I believe you right click and then go extract. There should be some kind of option there. Or you can double click to go inside it. Essentially, just drag all of the files that are inside this zip folder out onto your desktop. And we can double click this folder and have a look inside. So we've got a set of instructions here. And if any of this isn't clear or you do get stuck, please let me know down in the comments and I'll try and keep these updated just so they're as clear as possible for everyone. We have logosheet.ai, logo.ai, and this output folder has some formats already created here. You can add to these, you can use them, you can delete them. This is just where we're going to be outputting our logo in a few different formats. So we'll close that for now. So first of all, let's just open up your logo file. And we have your logo here. Of course, this will be your own logo. So we'll double click this to open it up in Illustrator which of course is actually my logo, so this might get a bit confusing, but I, I spent a lot of time designing this, you know, so I've got to, I've got to show it off somewhere. <laughs> so I've got my logo. This will be your logo, and just drag over everything to select it and go to Edit and Copy. And next, what we're going to do is open up the logo.ai file from the folder. And you'll see we have four different variations of the logo. So we have a mono, essentially black and white, reversed out. And we have the standard black and white. And then we have the full color versions over here. Now you can use all of these. You can use none of these. It's entirely up to you. You can also go to file and change this from CMYK to RGB. So depending on uh, which one you want to use, you might want to do this a couple of times. I think we'll just go with RGB for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our logo here and then paste this into this document. And we'll delete all of the ones that are already there. So I'm just selecting these and pressing backspace on the keyboard. And we can just go and size this up, something similar. Now these are all separate artboards, so we can manually position this in the center or we can go to the align panel on the right. If you don't see it over there, just go to window down to align and we'll change what we're going to align to. Now we want to align to the artboard. So let's just zoom in nice and close and then we'll align this horizontally and vertically to the center. Now if, it, if you paste into an artboard and it aligns to a different artboard, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes, just zoom into the artboard, move the logo around so Illustrator recognizes that we're on this artboard and then just go and do the align to center again. That's a little workaround. So once we've done this, we can now select this and go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place, and we'll do the same thing. So you can see if I try and align this now, it actually aligns it back to this artboard. So as I was saying, just zoom in on the artboard you want to align to, give it, give it a little wiggle, move it around like that, so Illustrator knows we're on this artboard now, and then just align to center. So it's just like giving Illustrator a little bit of a nudge. And then we can hold shift to select both of these, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, hold shift and drag across. And then again, do the same thing. We'll just zoom in nice and close, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And we'll align to that artboard. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And we'll align to that artboard. Now, of course, we need to adjust the colors. So this one here is white. So we can just select white from the color picker 
or we've got the swatches panel over here. And hopefully when you pasted your graphic in, it will have added your swatch or given you an option to add your swatches to the swatch panel. So let's make sure we pick the right ones there and we have the black here as well. And this one's going to be the blue. And then we have the standard full color logo on a white background there. So next what we can do is go to file and save. And we can close our logo file down because we don't need that anymore. We've essentially set up the template of our logo in a variety of different color variations. And now we get to load up logo sheet. And this is where the fun happens. So you can see all of these preset sizes. We have a small, uh, medium, large, extra large, and then an extra, extra large. I think that's what I've named them in the files as well all set up and you can see because this is a logo pack that I've used before it automatically updates that as I open the files now when you open it up for the first time it may say uh, it can't find an image do you want to replace it if it does just select replace and then all you have to do is point illustrator in the direction of this file here logo.ai and then what it will do is it will update all of these with the logos from here. Now it's only using the color ones at the moment because this is just the way I've set it up. You can of course duplicate all of these and then go to window and links and then click here and relink them all to black and white versions or you can just do the full color version, delete, grab this over here move it over there and do the same thing all over again. So if I were to save this file now, now these two files are linked, I'll we'll just click yes. What it will do is it will update logo sheet with these changes. And if it doesn't update like here, just go to the window and links panel and you'll see the yellow warning triangle here indicates that something's changed between these two files and it needs to be updated to the latest version. And here you can see Illustrator is prompting me to update them. You can click yes, but if you click no, we can do this manually by selecting all of the links holding shift and then clicking this icon here, update link, and it will update all of them. So you can see you can do it for the color ones first. You could do it in RGB, CMYK, then you can do the black ones so let's just undo that again. File save. Yep. Switch back to logo sheet. Go to that links panel. And you can actually dock this over on the right. It's probably a bit quicker than keep opening it up. And we'll select all the links. We'll update with any changes. And there we go. So if I were to increase the logo size or move the position around, if I move it up here, and then go and update it. You can see it updates those changes. So these two documents are now linked. So let's just go and update that all again. There we go, so we're good. We've got our logo, it's automatically populated in all of these different sizes with two different variations for each size. And we can now go to File, Export and Export for Screens. And we can select all of the artboards we want to use. So we can select all and it checks all of them. You can uncheck them. You can select a specific range up here, but we'll go with all of them for now. And you can see I've also named these artboards. So we have S for small, M for medium, L for large, XL for extra large, and then we have XXL for extra, extra large. And if you want to adjust the names, just go to window artboards and you can adjust the names of your artboards. So standard is on a white background, reversed is on a colored background. So again, file, export, export for screens. We want to export everything and we can pick a location here. So we'll go into logo pack, select output, and then you can do these in turn. So we'll start with, well, we'll just export into the main folder for now. And we've, we've added the logo name here. So the prefix is what's going to be at the beginning of your file name. 
So for this, I might go Dansky-logo- dash, and I, oh, I always include dashes personally because some file formats like PNG will need to add those automatically. So it's just easier for everything to have a dash like that. So we've got SVG selected, which is a scalable vector graphic. We can add another one. So we could have PNG at 1x. We can add another one, PNG at 2x. And the suffix is what's going to be at the end of the file name. So if you have 1x and 2x versions, you could do this just to differentiate between the two. But we'll just get rid of that, delete that. So we're just going to have a 2x PNG. We could add JPEG 100. So 100 is a high quality JPEG. And what we're going to do as well is, can we add any more? We could add PDF if we want, or a different format of PNG. It's entirely up to you. And when you've added all of your scales, just go to export artboard, and it will export all of them. Now for the Illustrator one, I would personally just go to file and save as, and then add this whole Illustrator file into that Illustrator folder. So if I expand this, you can see the AI one. I would just add this whole one in there. And for the EPS, we do a slightly different process. So we go save as EPS, use artboards, all, and then save. And you can choose your format and a few other settings. We'll click OK. And it might take a moment to populate these. So you can see here we've got all of these different formats. And I'm just going to go through by holding either Command or Control, depending on whether you're on a Mac or PC, and just grab all of the JPEGs. In fact, let's just switch the view. And we'll just drag all the JPEGs into the JPEG folder. all the PNGs, so I'm just holding Command or Control and selecting all of these individual formats and dragging them into the respective folder. And then we've got SVG as well. Now, if you do include the EPS ones, you may need to do a little bit of naming manually because these are exported slightly differently. So what I like to do is just copy the file name of one of the SVGs or the PNGs or the JPEGs and then just go and add these in. So this is the standard one. So I'm just gonna paste that in. So with the EPS, you kind of have to rename the files a little bit manually, but then you've kind of got all of these names here. So I can see which one is the, the XL standard and the XL reverse. So I just need to grab this part of the file name, select the respective logo file or the respective EPS file, paste it in and just rename the EPS ones manually. Now all of this is considerably quicker than doing the whole process manually but at the end of it you will have an output folder where you can go in and you've got a color or a reversed and a standard version of the logo at a large size, you have it at a medium size, a small size. And you can see down here, the dimensions of these different files is changing as I'm navigating through them. So lots of different sizes. In fact, these are absolutely huge because of the size that I exported the map. But of course that depends whether you're exporting at 1x, 2x, 3x and all that stuff. So the PNGs here. So lots of different sizes depending on whether your client is going to use the logo for the web or they want it on the side of a vehicle or a building or a hot air balloon, whatever it is, there's tons of different sizes. So you're covered. And then you can basically grab this whole folder and depending on where, as can't speak, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you just want to go and right click and select compress five items. Or if you're on a PC, right click and go 
create new zip folder. Hopefully that's an option. It's been a while since I've done it on a PC. And then we can just call this client final logos, whatever you like. And then you can supply this zip folder. And then when the client opens it their end, they just extract from the zip folder. And then they've got their master logo file here and then every other format in all the different sizes they could possibly want and they're super happy and that was super quick and easy for you to do. And there we go, that's how to use the logo pack. Remember you can download this for free, linked in the description. I'd love to hear about your experience using it and if you have any questions or comments about it, please do drop those down below as well. A huge thank you to the people who support me on Patreon, thank you so much. If you'd like to find out more or become a patron, there is a link in the description. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.